Our senses are dwarfed by the immensity of our planet. We can sense directly only our local surroundings. Thus, we cannot possibly look at our whole state or country at one time, even though we may be able to see the entire street where we live. A map can provide a useful substitute for the real world for many analytical purposes. With the scale of a map, for instance, we can compute the actual size of its features, length, area, and volume. A word statement of a map scale compares X units on the map to Y units on the Earth, often abbreviated X unit to Y units. For example, the expression 1 inch to 10 miles means that 1 inch on the map represents 10 miles on the Earth. A graphic scale, such as a bar graph, is concrete and therefore overcomes the need to visualize inches and miles that is associated with a word statement of scale. A graphic scale permits direct visual comparison of feature sizes and distances between features. The third form of map scale is the representative fraction, RF. A representative fraction defines the ratio between the distance on the map and the distances on the Earth in fractional terms, such as 1 to 633,600. Another important aspect of map scale is to give us some notion of the geometric accuracy. The greater the expanse of the real world shown on the map, the less accurate the geometry of that map is. If a curve is represented by a straight line segments, short segments are more often similar to the curve than the long statements. Similarly, if a plane is placed in contact with a sphere, the distance between the two surfaces is slight where they touch but grows rapidly with increasing distance from the point of contact. The spherical surface of the Earth is so shown on flat maps by means of map projections. It is helpful to think of the creation of a projection as a two-step process. First, the immense Earth is reduced to a small globe with a scale equal to that of the desired flat map. All spatial properties on the globe are true to those on the Earth. Second, the globe is flattened. Since that cannot be done without distortion, it is accomplished in such a way that the resulting map exhibits certain desirable spatial properties. The success of the perspective approach depends on finding a projection surface that is flat or can be flattened without distortion. The cone, cylinder, and plane possesses those attributes and serve as models for three general classes of map projections, conic, cylindrical, and planar, or azimuthal. If the point or line of contact is changed to some other position on the globe, the distortion pattern will be recentered on the new position, but will retain the same symmetrical form. Thus, centering a projection on the area of interest on the Earth's surface can minimize the effects of projection distortion. To depict both direction and distance from a point, area must be distorted. Similarly, to preserve area as well as direction from a point, distance has to be distorted. Because the Earth's surface is continuous in all directions from every point, Discontinuities that violate proximity relationships must occur on all map projections. Although a map projection cannot be free of distortion, it can represent one or several spatial properties of the Earth's surface accurately if other properties are sacrificed. The two projections used for world maps throughout the textbook illustrate that point well. Goods homosaline projection, shown in figure A10, belongs to the oval category and it shows area accurately, although it gives the impression that the Earth's surface has been torn, peeled, and flattened. The interruptions in figure A10 have been placed in the major oceans, giving continuity to the land masses. Consequently, in different locations, the properties of distance, direction, and shape are also distorted to varying degrees. The distortion pattern mimics that of cylindrical projections, with the equatorial zone the most faithfully represented. 
The Robinson projection, which is also used in this textbook, falls into that category. Its oval projection has a global feel, somewhat like that of Good's Homo line. But the Robinson projection shows the North Pole and the South Pole as lines that are slightly more than half the length of the equator, thus exaggerating the distances and areas near the poles. Areas look larger than they really are in high latitudes near the poles and smaller than they really are in the low latitudes near the equator.